Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about determine whether a relationship represents a function. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. So, how do we know if a relationship represents a function? I'm going to go through three examples here. Our first one here is a relationship is a function here. Notice we have the inputs. We have P, Q, and R, and P is sent to the output, which is M, and Q and R are both sent to N, the letter M, as an output. That represents a function. We're allowed to have multiple inputs go to one output, okay? Now let's go with the second relationship here. We have the inputs P, Q, and R, and each one respectively goes to the output X, Y, Z. So one input goes to one output. That also represents a function. That is totally fine. The third one here is a little tricky. Notice we have two inputs, P and Q. Okay. The outputs, P goes the X, but here's the part that really causes this not to be a function. Q goes to Y and Z. We're not allowed to have one input go to two outputs. And there we have, we have, example, or have, it, we have examples here of what, present, what represents a function, which one doesn't. So let's go through a definition here. A function. A function is a relation, uh, a relation in which each possible input value leads to exactly one output value. We say the output is a function of the input. The input value makes up the domain, and the output value makes up the range. So hopefully you've been familiar with these values of domain and range, and domain makes up the input while the range makes up the output. Okay? All right. So let's go through an example here, okay? And this is a real-world example, okay? And we have example one, and I'm going to put a little menu up here for you, okay? We have plain donut is 149, a jelly donut is 199, and a chocolate donut is 199. Question A asks us, is price a function of the item? So is price a function of the item? Okay. Well, let's think of the, uh, the input as the items on the menu. So we have our menu here. The input is the items on this menu. And the output values are the prices. Well, each input only goes to one output, so we're good, right? Or it can go to, uh, yeah, only goes to one output, right? So we have two inputs go to the same output, that's fine. That's a jelly donut and a chocolate donut. They both are $1.99. That's okay. So, yes, it is. So the price is a function of each item. Okay? Now question two asks us, or B asks us this. Is the item a function of the price? Okay, so think about that. Is the item a function of the price? Okay? Well, if we reverse that there, okay, we either consider the prices then to be the input and the output to be the item. Well, that would make $1.99 going to two items, which are the jelly donut and the chocolate donut. So, no, therefore, that can't happen. The item is not a function of price. Okay? So the second example here, the item is not a function of the price. All right? So let's go dive into a second example. Example two here, okay? Example two gives us a table, okay? And they ask us this. In a particular math class, the overall percent grade corresponds to a grade point average. Is grade point average a function of the percent grade? Is the percent grade a function of the grade point average? So we, hit, we have our table here. Notice on the table, we have a percent grade that's from 0 to 56 and a grade point average of 0, right? GPA. 
Then 57 to 61 is 1, 62 to 66 is 1.5, 67 to 71 is a 2.0, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera, right? All the way up to 92 to 100 being a 4.0, okay? See, this is different. When I was in school, we only had 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, okay? There was no halves in there, but that was a different time, I guess. All right, well, what do we have here? So the first question is, is grade point average a function of the percent grade? So is grade point average a function of the percent grade? Okay. Well, yes. Okay. The percent grade here, right, or the grade point average, right, is a function of percent grade. Okay. Well, the percent grade, different percent grades can go to one grade point average. So for example, if you had a zero, not that good, versus a 50, meh you both get a zero grade point average. So yes, that is a function. So the grade point average is a function of percent grade. Okay, but if we reverse that though, flip that system around, is percent grade a function of grade point average? Okay, that would be incorrect. Okay, so we would have a grade point average of one that would go reversed towards, let's say, a percent grade that can, there's multiple percent grades that have essentially a input there, or output. So like if for a grade point average of zero, right, there's multiple outputs that it could go to. You can get a zero, you can get a 50 as a percent grade. So the reverse of that would be false, okay? All right, so let me go erase this and we'll dive into the next part here, um, function notation. So now we're going to learn about function notation. Function notation. The notation y equals f of x defines a function named f. This is read as y is a function of x. The letter x represents the input value or independent variable. The letter y or f of x represents the output value or dependent variable. Okay. So now we're given this problem number three here. And they tell us this, use function notation to represent a function whose input is the name of a month and output is the number of days in that month. Assume that the domain does not include leap years, okay? So we have this example here, okay? They tell us, again, use a function notation to represent a function whose input is the name of the month and output is the number of days in that month, okay? So we can write this, the days, is equal to a function of the month, okay? Or we can write like this, d equals f of m. So for example, if we had the 31st, that is our output, that is equal to the function here, we call that the rule of our input, which is the month, so let's say January, an example, and that is our input, okay? So there we wrote a, we used function notation here to represent a function whose input is the name of the month, the output is the number of days in that month, okay? So again, our input is the month here, is our function, the output became the number of days. So in January, we had 31 days there, okay? All right, let's do another example here. Let's toss in number four. So a function n equals f of y gives the number of police officers n in a town in year y. What does f of 2005 equal 300 represent? Okay, so a function notation n equals f of y gives the number of police officers n in a town years y. So what does this represent, okay? Well, our input here is a year. So input is a year. So in 2005, that's our input or output. What does output tell us? Well, 
output says in our town there are 300 police officers this is the output and we have 300 police officers in that town for the year of 2005 okay all right let me go erase this and we'll dive into the next part here All right, so now with number five here, we have some tables here, okay? We have three tables right there. We're gonna see which ones represent a function. So which one, which table represents a function? Okay, so we have three tables, table six, seven, and eight. So table six. Is table six a function or not? Well, I'll look at it. We have our input values, two, five, and eight. Two goes to one, five goes to three, and eight goes to six. Each one input goes to a different output. So that works, that's a function, okay? Table six is a function there. We're allowed it, it's all good, right? It keeps our rules. What about table seven? Okay, well again, let's look at our inputs. Negative three, zero, and four. Negative three goes to five, zero goes to one, and four goes to five. Are we allowed to have two different inputs go to the same output, right? Negative three went to five, and four went to five. And yes, we're allowed to have that. Two inputs can go to one output. So table seven is a function. Okay, what about table eight? Mm -hmm. Table 8, well, our inputs, 1, 5, and 5. Output, 0, 2, and 4. So 1 goes to 0, 5 goes to 2, and 5 goes to 4. There's the issue. Look at the 5s. 5 went to 2, and 5 went to 4. That shows that we have the same one input, which was 5, that went to two different outputs. So that is not a function. Okay, that is not a function right there. Okay, well, I hope you learned something here in this video about whether a relationship is a function or not, right? If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So, as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math, when you need help, you use minute math, minute math. Minute Math, when you need help, you use Minute Math, MinuteMathTutor.com.